Gamergate is a consumer revolt against unethical journalism. It arose from cronyism, journalists being far too comfortable with the subjects of their articles without disclosure. Nearly three years ago, Aaron Joni released the Zoe Post. Part of the post revealed that Zoe Quinn had been having a relationship with Nathan Grayson. Grayson had been giving Zoe coverage without disclosure. The Zoe post also reveals an emotionally abusive relationship in which Zoe constantly lied to Aaron Joni, cheated on Aaron with multiple men, and would use emotionally charged language to shift the blame onto Aaron. She also used the threat of suicide against Aaron. After the post, Zoe placed a gag order on him that was eventually vacated after Aaron thought the order. The Fine Young Capitalists are a group set up to help women in game development. 4chan raised thousands for them. Zoe Quinn, along with Maya Felix Kramer, targeted the Fine Young Capitalists, which included DDoSing their site and doxing the group's creator. A photographer named Mallory worked with Zoe Quinn and stated that she would tell tall tales, like claiming to have killed a person. Zoe Quinn once claimed to be the victim of harassment from Wizard Chan, a message board for depressed men, though only a handful of messages were ever shown as evidence. Frederick Brennan Founder of Chan says that Zoe herself made the threatening posts. Multiple outlets reported Quinn's story, including Vice, turning people against the vulnerable group. Despite having achieved nothing in the gaming industry, Vice still promotes Zoe. If you actually listen to what Gigi was saying, you'd know that people like Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian already had connections in the media and the online press. It wouldn't matter if Gamergate happened or not. They still would have had article after article after article written about them. Candace Owens wanted to raise funds for her own anti-harassment organization. She wrote a blog post detailing her belief that Zoe Quinn and Randy Harper were responsible for harassment against her. Owens only started receiving harassment after having talked to Zoe Quinn, including receiving threatening messages direct to her personal email account. So-called anti-harassment activist Randy Harper labelled Candace Owens a fucking idiot in a public article for her concerns. New York Magazine writer Jesse Single wrote an article defending Quinn and Harper from accusations of harassment. Single was following Quinn's private Twitter account and knew Quinn was leaking the contents of her email exchange with Owens to over 300 followers, and he did not mention this in his article. E3 2017 the Last Night is presented and is by far one of the standout games of the entire conference. People opposed to Gamergate dug up three-year-old tweets of the creative director Tim Sorat. These tweets were subsequently shared by Zoe Quinn. Sorat had dared to express the view that Gamergate is for journalistic integrity, honest debate, transparency, inclusiveness and egalitarianism. He dared to express disagreement with feminism. In reaction to these three-year-old tweets, Feminist Frequency collaborator Maya Felix Kramer suggested industry-wide vetting to expel wrongthinkers. Competing developer Jennifer Shirell demanded that the game doesn't get published. Ubisoft employee Louis Gauthier said that he would pirate the game in order to sabotage the seals. Polygon deliberately put pressure on the publisher Raw Fury and on Microsoft to comment on this witch hunt. Senior editor of Polygon, Ben Kachira, made his agenda clear in the comments of the article, stating that he had no interest in talking to Tim Surratt, writing him off as having a history of shitty views. Polygon deleted comments pointing out Kachira's own history, including the comment that rape is funny. Responding to Polygon, Raw Fury threw Tim under the bus, stating that they believe in feminism and would not work with Tim Sorette if he was against feminism in any aspect. 
Tim only ever expressed entirely moderate positions. A post of Tim's from 2014 states, I am for a better representation of women in video games. I want more female characters, written to be interesting and less cliché. And I also want more female developers in the industry. Quite possibly under pressure from the publisher, on the stage of the E3 PC conference, Tim apologised for his tweets. I want to make it absolutely clear that Tim did nothing wrong. Tim has nothing to be sorry for, and nothing to be ashamed of. The publisher, Raw Fury, should apologise to Tim for not having Tim's back, and for buying into this insane notion that all developers should share the same narrow ideology. Zoe admonished Intel for having Tim on stage. Zoe also retweeted a sock puppet account that was created solely to attack Tim. There is some evidence that at least one of the tweets this sock puppet shared has been faked. Cosplayer Nikki Moxie became the focus of an article attacking the founder of Oculus simply for being a supporter of Gamergate. A number of journalists brought further attention to Nikki Moxie. Lynn Walsh is the president of the Society of Professional Journalists and made her point clear. Palmer Lucky funding a meme group became news across 118 different outlets. Not one of these outlets has covered the con leaks. A far more interesting story, which implicates Twitter in supporting real, targeted harassment. Zoe Quinn appeared on CNN to discuss the Crash Override Network, describing it as an anti-harassment task force. Crash Override Network is listed as a trusted partner for Twitter. Con are also a partner of Feminist Frequency. Recent con chat leaks, confirmed as real by former con member Ian Miles Chung, reveal the people at the centre of con do nothing but plot to sabotage people. Childishly trying to ruin camera shots during a game jam. The con members also indulge in Zoe's petty grudges, like attacking feminist commentator Lana Kersner. They attack a range of internet personalities and developers, including respected and award-winning YouTuber Total Biscuit. They also dox, which is the act of sharing other people's private information online. In the con chat, Randy Harper posts dox information from people posting in Gamergate Facebook groups, posting their personal information in the chat, and sharing their information on Twitter to have them blacklisted. They also targeted a Purple Heart recipient, and the only reason they targeted these people is because they showed support for Gamergate. Israel Galvez appeared on the news to describe people who dox. They're basically domestic terrorists. Galvez is a member of Khan and an internet abuse specialist for Amazon who have been caught attempting to dox Mombot, an anonymous Gamergate supporter from Japan. Also implicated in the doxing were Matt Myers and a creative director for Ubisoft, Pal Hofstein. Mombot was able to work with an insider in order to plant fake information so that they could document these individuals taking part in doxing. <laughs> They played us like a damn fiddle! Robert Marmalejo, otherwise known as Unseen Perfidy, is a member of Khan who is alleged to have sexually harassed women he was supposed to be counselling for online abuse. Sarah Nyberg, also known as Sarah Butts, is another member of Khan. Sarah is a self-confessed paedophile who shared photos of her underage cousin. She tried to excuse this behaviour by claiming to be a teenage edgelord even though she was in her 20s. Con member Catherine Cross came to her defence. Cross has also worked with Feminist Frequency. Ex-football player Chris Clue was also in the Con chat leaks. Um, what I've noticed is in the anti-Gamergate camp, the definition of harassment tends to be a moving goalpost. So, for example, my first uh, experience of Chris Cluey here was actually him dogpiling me with Sarah Butts attempting to have me targeted by a notorious online troll board. That there's constant assertion by Anti-Gamergate that they stand against harassment when every experience I've had with Anti-Gamergate thus far has been them either dogpiling or attempting to harass. And that's the truth. In the con leaks, the group discusses how to shut down a charity campaign 
that was being run by Mercedes Carrera and the Fang Young Capitalists. What is it that qualifies any of these people to be part of an anti-harassment organisation? It seems to me that Zoe just picks her friends, picks people who hate Gabrigate. At this point I just want Zoe to stop having the influence to hurt people and the best way to do that is to spread the word far and wide that her clique cannot be trusted. Ben Kachira, the senior editor of Polygon, was giving positive coverage to Zoe Quinn while financially supporting her. Ben Kachira was also part of Game Journal Pros, a secret mailing list of over 100 games journalists. In this mailing list, Kachira bullied a rival publication into censoring discussion around the Zoe Quinn scandal. Amidst the concerns of cronyism in games journalism brought up by Gamergate, a series of coordinated articles were released on the 28th of August 2014 for the purpose of attacking and denigrating gamers. These came to be known as the Gamers Are Dead articles, as they were full of absurd attacks and generalizations against the gamer identity. Lee Alexander was one of the ringleaders of these coordinated articles, referring to gamers concerned with ethics as obtuse shitslingers. It's not surprising that Lee Alexander would stand in opposition to a consumer movement concerned with ethics, as she is by far one of the worst offenders when it comes to ignoring ethics. Along with Graham Linehan, Alexander once singled out a young disabled man to make fun of his appearance. Gamergate has always been far more diverse than this clique, with Kunkel Award winner Brad Glasgow's research of Gamergate supporters from 48 different countries showing that Gamergate tends to lean left politically. Gamergate has always been far more creative and accepting of a wide range of individuals. Yet outlet after outlet takes whatever Zoe and Anita say about Gamergate at face value and repeats immediately disprovable lies that Gamergate is opposed to women, or even that Gamergate was about white supremacy. Google literally autocompletes the word gamer to Gamergate, which was an internet harassment campaign with ties to white supremacy groups. I support Gamergate because I'm against corruption, lack of transparency, and unethical behavior from game journalism. I'm tired of the media misrepresenting it. I'm a, I'm a member of Gamer, and I support Gamer Game because I'm tired of these journalists and activists pretending that I don't exist because I want to support their narratives or their genius, and I'm not that fear. I am indeed the fat white neckbeard that the internet has proclaimed me to be, and for that I sincerely apologise. But as a white man, my opinions and also this apology are totally irrelevant, so you can all go on with your lives now. <laughs> postmodernism is that it doesn't have a shred of gratitude and there's something pathologically wrong with a person who does have, doesn't have any gratitude especially when they live in what so far is the best of all possible worlds.
a gamer. I am pro Gamergate and a supporter of hashtag not your shield. I have been accused of being a sock puppet account on multiple occasions and I'm tired of people deciding what I should think because I'm a woman. I can make decisions on my own. Like I've talked to so many people that because I don't identify as feminist and because I'm not horror struck by women in video games who are built the same way that I am, I, I somehow am an idiot and, and have no self-worth and no self-value. The media did wrong by this amazing collection of gamers and thinkers. I will never let the people who perpetuate lies against them get away with it. And that is the spirit of what I mean when I say I am pro Gamergate. I will see you in this ashes. You're all diamonds. <laughs>